Hey again, everyone. So uh, in this video, I'd kind of like to go through a an example of a word problem that you might get for finding the maximum or minimum value of a parabola. So just before we get to the question, I want to remind you that when you're finding the maximum or minimum value of a parabola or a quadratic function, uh, what you're really doing is you're finding the y value of the vertex. Okay, so you're dealing with the vertex, but specifically the y value. Okay, so oftentimes we're dealing, you know, we, we were the whole goal here is to find the y value of the vertex somehow. Now, not every case is going to be like that, but um, many cases are going to be like that. In fact, this case is not going to be like that, but uh, but I just want to drive home the point that you're looking for the y val value most of the time. Okay, and we'll talk about why we're not doing that uh, in in this case, pretty soon. So let's take a look at this question. So you have 600 meters of fencing to create an enclosed flower garden. You have three kinds of flowers to plant, and you want them to be kept separate, like in the diagram below. So you're going to notice that I have three different kind of sections in this, uh, this diagram. I got uh, one section right here, got a second section right here, and a third section right here. So the idea is that in each of those sections, we're going to have a, a kind of flower growing, okay? And you want to keep them separate. So the first question I have is A, what are the dimensions of the largest possible garden that you could make? Okay, so this is a maximum or minimum value problem because what we're really doing is we're looking for the maximum possible uh, like area for the garden, right? The largest possible garden means the, the largest possible area that I can kind of cover with this garden, okay? So we're, we are maximizing something here. We're looking for the maximum area. Or specifically, we're looking for the dimensions in the maximum area. Okay, so how do we tackle this problem? Well, first thing I want to point out to you is that this particular garden is a rectangle, um, and uh, as such, it has a, a length and a width. Okay, so the length is going to be along the top or along the bottom. The width is going to be along the sides. But I do want you to keep in mind that although the width is along the sides, you also have kind of two fenced sections kind of in the middle of this big rectangle that, uh, that go up and down, and, and they also have the same measurement as the width of the sides. Okay, so that's going to be an important detail that we're going to have to keep in mind here. Now, um, why is it important? Well, remember that you have 600 meters of fencing here. And that 600 meters is going to cover the outer perimeter of this fencing, but also those two kind of sections uh, in, in the middle there, right? Those two sections that go up and down, those two extra widths. So that's going to, that's going to come from our 600 meters of fencing as well. So let's think about how we can kind of... Uh, create an equation to to kind of relate the length and the width here. So let, let's see. So we know we've got 600 meters of fencing. Okay, so that's 600 meters of fencing. Well, that 600 meters is going to be contributed by, well, let's see, we have a length of fencing along the top, and we have a length of fencing along the bottom. So we have two lengths of fencing. So we're going to have 600 is equal to two lengths. But that's not everything, right? So it's not just going to be the two lengths. We also have some widths. And we're going to have a width on the right side, a width on the left side, but we also have those two kind of widths going through the middle, right? So what we really have here are four widths that we're going we're gonna to consider here, four widths that are also coming from that 600 meters. So that 600 comes from the two lengths, but also from the four widths. So we, we can kind of, from that, build an equation, 600 equals the two lengths plus four widths. So if you take two of the lengths, add four of the widths, that should contribute to the 600 meters of fencing. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to take this equation and, and I'd like to isolate for one of my variables. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one uh, that I isolate for, but uh, in this case, I'm going to isolate for the length, okay? But it, again, it doesn't matter which one you isolate for, okay? So to isolate for length, that means I'm going to have to subtract out 4w from both sides. So when I do that, I'm going to get 600 minus 4w is equal to 2l. Okay? And then, of course, I'm going to need to divide by 2, okay? So I'm going to divide everything by 2. Okay, and let's see, so 600 divided by 2 is 300, negative 4w divided by 2 is minus 2w, and then 2l divided by 2 just gives me l. Okay, so now I have an equation for my length that's been completely isolated for. Okay, so I have an expression that relates my length in terms of my width. Now what this means is that if I know the width of this garden, okay, that gives me the maximum possible area, then I can calculate the length by just substituting the width in. So the next goal of this question, the next kind of immediate goal, is to find out what the width is that's going to give me the, the biggest possible garden, the biggest possible area. So if I'm looking for the biggest possible area, that means I need an equation for area that I'm going to maximize. Now if I'm going to maximize it, that, that's kind of, uh, that, that implies that there's going to be a maximum value, and that kind of tells us that the equation that we're going to get for area is going to be it's going to be a quadratic one when we do this correctly. Okay, it's going to be quadratic, and specifically it'll be one that opens down. So we're going to see that in a moment. So I want you to remember that the area formula for a rectangle is just a is equal to l times w. Okay, cool. So 
Next thing I want to do is just just to make the uh, the equation look a little bit neater and a little bit more like what you're used to. Uh, I'd like to like to make a just a quick variable switch here, right? So uh, I want to I want to pretend that instead of instead of w, we're going to be using x. So x is going to represent our width for our equation, okay? But it still represents our width. So that means that width is x, and instead of uh, 300 minus 2w uh, as the formula for our, our length, we're going to have 300 minus 2x. So let's make some substitutions then. So uh, instead of the L in my area formula, I'm going to substitute my, my expression for length that we, that we just found by isolating for L. And that's going to be uh, A is equal to 300 minus 2x. So again, we switched out uh, W for x instead. Okay, uh, And then uh, I have width, which we just replaced with x. So that's the second thing in here. So I'm going to multiply that by x. Okay, cool. So I have 300 minus 2x times x. That's a, that's a formula that represents the area of my garden given my width, which again, we're, we're calling x right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply this x into my bracket. So I'm going to distribute it. Let's see what happens when I do that. So I'm going to have 300 times x, and that's going to give me 300x, and then I have uh, x times negative 2x, which gives me minus 2x squared. So I get 300x minus 2x squared. Okay. Um, so you're going to notice that is a quadratic. It's it's just written a little bit out of order compared to what you usually would do. So usually in standard form, that x squared term would would come first, so before the 300x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of rearrange them. So you got to keep in mind that the, uh, the 2x squared is actually minus 2x squared. So if I move that, I'm going to have uh, minus 2x squared. And since the 300x is positive, I'll have plus 300x. So I get a is equal to negative 2x squared plus 300x. Now that's not exactly like standard uh, standard form you'd think because you know we usually have a c value at the end, but uh, in this case we kind of do have a c value. It, it's it's just going to be plus zero. So our our equation is a is equal to negative two x squared plus three hundred x, but there's a plus zero at the end that you can think as being the c value. Okay, so this is the formula for the area of my garden, and the goal is to find the the uh, the dimensions for the maximum possible area. So what I want to do is I want to find the maximum value of this quadratic equation, right? Because the maximum value of this quadratic equation is going to be the maximum area. So let's do that. Uh, there are many ways that you can find the maximum value. Remember, the goal here is to kind of find the y value of our vertex. So you could do that by uh, completing the square and changing this into vertex form. That would be an acceptable way to do this. Or you could find the two, uh, the two zeros, the two x-intercepts, uh, and then average them to get your axis of symmetry, and then plug your value for your axis of symmetry into the equation. Uh, or you could do the method that I'm going to do, and I'm going to use the axis of symmetry formula. So the axis of symmetry formula, if you recall, is x is equal to negative b divided by 2a. So substituting negative, or sorry, b in for, uh, sorry, sub substituting 300 for b and uh, negative 2 in for a, that's going to give us x is equal to negative 300 divided by 2 times negative 2, which is uh, negative 300 divided by negative 4, which gives me 75. Okay, so the axis of symmetry occurs at x equals 75. Now remember that x represents the width here. So that tells me that this x value here is the width that gives me the maximum area because that's the x value that gives me my maximum my maximum value. Okay, so this is the this is the the width that gives me the maximum uh, maximum area here. Okay, so I'm actually almost halfway done the first part of this problem finding the dimensions because that's the width. Now we need to find the length. But you might remember that we conveniently, closer to the beginning of the problem, came up with a, a formula or an, a, an equation that represents the length in terms of the width. That's this guy here. So to find out what the length is that's going to give me the maximum area, I'm going to substitute my, uh, my width in uh, into that formula. So remember the formula is uh, L is equal to 300 minus 2x. So substituting x uh, equals 75 in for, for my x value, it gives me 300 minus 2 times 75 which gives me 300 minus 150, which just gives me 150. So I know that the, uh, the width for my maximum area is going to be 75 meters, and the length for my maximum area is going to be 150 meters. So the answer to the first part of the question, what are the dimensions for the lar largest possible area? Well, the dimensions are going to be 150 meters by 75 meters. Okay, so that's, that's the kind of bulk of this question, but there is one more thing I want to discuss. Okay, so let's take a look at the next question I want to discuss. And that is, what is the, the domain and range for the area function that we created? Okay, so what's, what's the area function that we created? Well, remember, it's a equals negative 2x squared plus 300x. That's the one that, that we ended up creating in this question. That's the, that's the equation that models the area. So what is the domain and range for the area, and, uh, area function in this case? Okay, so um, you might be tempted to say that the domain uh, for this 
is going to be all real numbers because uh, it is a parabola. It's a quadratic function. But you do need to remember that since this is a real-world scenario, that means that there's going to be some values for width that don't make any sense. So, for example, we know that our width could not possibly be negative 50, for example, because that, that's just crazy. You can't have a negative width. Okay, so we're going to take a look at what this what this looks like then. Okay, so I'm going to draw a little bit of a bit of a graph here. Okay, so we have our x and y axes, which I'm going to label with area and width. Okay, so area is our y values essentially, and width is our x values. Okay, and we know according to what we just did that uh, the maximum area is going to occur with the width of 75 meters. Okay, so I know that my my vertex is going to occur um, over 75, right? So it's going to be a point over a width of 75, but we, we need to actually figure out what that maximum area is going to be to place my point, because I, I don't know how high to put it right now. So how are we going to find it the, the, air, the area, the maximum area? Well, we know that the width that gives our maximum area is 75. We have an equation that represents the area given the width, so we're just going to substitute 75 into the area equation. So A is going to be equal to negative 2 times 75 squared plus 300 times 75. Okay, simplifying this up, we get negative 11,250 plus 22,500, which is going to give us 11,250 meters squared. Okay, so that means that the area that's going to be the maximum area for this enclosure is going to occur at 11,250. So I'm going to place a point, which is going to be my vertex, uh, over 75 and next to 11,250. Okay, so that's that's pretty good so far. We got our vertex, but uh, that's not really going to be a, enough to state the domain and range, is it? So what we're going to need now is at least a couple other points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the two x-intercepts, or I guess the width intercepts, uh, intercepts so to speak, uh, of our of our function, and I'll plot those. And easiest way to do that would probably be to factor in this case. So let's let's factor the equation. So if I factor it, let's see, I can pull out a common factor of negative 2x. So that gives me a equals negative 2x times x minus 150. Okay, that's fully factored. So uh, that tells me that something times something uh, is going to be equal to, uh, to area. And if my area is going to be 0, because I am looking for the x-intercepts, and that's where my area is 0, right? that tells me that I'm going to have a solution when negative 2x is equal to 0. Okay, which tells me that x will be uh, will be zero there, right? And I'm also going to have a solution when x minus fifty, or sorry, one fifty is equal to zero, and so that my means my second solution is x equals one hundred and fifty. Okay, so that means I can actually plot my x-intercepts or my width intercepts now, right? So I'm going to have one at zero on the origin, and I'm going to have one at one hundred and fifty. Okay, so I have three points. I'm going to just kind of sketch in a little parabola there. Okay, so there's my parabola, and uh, I want you to notice a couple things. So first of all, I want you to notice that I have not drawn my parabola uh, down below the width axis. Now let's think about why that would be the case. If I did draw my parts of my parabola down below the width axis, that would tell me that I would have negative area there, and we know that doesn't make any sense, so I didn't even bother drawing it. Okay. Uh, also notice that I do not have any, uh, any points to the left of my area axis, right? because that would imply we would have a negative width. So we leave, we leave that out as well, okay? So this is all I'm going to draw. Now, this is going to help us with the domain and range, because um, the domain and range are going to be slightly different given that this is a real-world scenario, right? We need to have positive widths, right? Uh, and we need to have positive areas, okay? So according to the sketch I made here, the domain is going to be the set of x values, which are elements of the real number system, such that, okay, so for domain, we're talking the x values. It looks like my smallest x value would be at 0, and my biggest x value is going to be at 150, okay? So I know I'm going to have values between 0 and 150. Um, so let's see, 0 is going to be less than x, which is going to be less than 150. Now I want you to notice that I did not actually put less than or equal to for either of these signs. And the reason why is that I'm actually preventing my, uh, my enclosure from having zero area. So I'm saying it could be bigger than zero, but it's not going to be equal to zero, right? I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to have some sort of, uh, of width at all times. And uh, I'm basically, I'm doing the same thing for the, the less than 150 part because uh, if the width was one equal to 150, that would mean my length would be zero. And again, I don't want my length to be zero. I want to have some sort of length. So that's my domain. My range is going to be uh, the set of A values, so for area, which are elements of the real number system such that. So again, it looks like my smallest area would be 0, but I don't really want to have an area of 0. So I'm going to say that, uh, that 0 is less than my area, but not equal to it. And it looks like my maximum area occurs at my vertex, which is 11,250. So A is an element of the real number system such that 0 is less than 
A for area which is less than or equal to 11,250. Now the reason why I'm using less than or equal to for that second one is because we know that we do actually achieve that area, right, when we have uh, dimensions of, I think it was 150 by 75. So I, it can be equal to that, okay? So uh, I know this has been a long problem, uh, but I hope it helps you with a couple of the things that we're going to be doing uh, when we, we look at finding the maximum and minimum value of a, of a parabola, okay? Um, we will go through a bit this in a bit in class, but, uh, but make sure you take a look through this. Take care, guys.